used the fishing pole and I got a zip tie yeah. and I put the zip tie up over the top of it and then I like teased it down the roof and then I put the fishing line and I was like trying to deploy a zip tie onto the rail from on the ground using a fishing pole. Don't be like schwa. Right. That's what I was, that's what I tell people. I'm like, you don't want to be like this, yeah. man. Cable management is not particularly attractive of a subject. It's not something that gets people excited uh, and, until you realize how important it is long term. Like anything, it's the details that really matter in terms of overall performance and quality and long term reliability and low, low cost of ownership. So doing it right the first time has tremendous long term cost benefits to the life of the system. You do it right. Something like this should last 20, maybe upwards of 30 years. This system, in my opinion, cable management was done sufficiently well. So these were done with good old fashioned zip ties and that is not uncommon. And these zip ties still look to be in pretty good condition. These don't seem like they're cracking in any way yet. I would think though, if you took, if you were to unzip one of these, that plastic will have that hard bend. That's what happens with oxidation. Yeah, you could snap it. Oh yeah. If but you, if you got the, it looks well done and it can be maintained over the years. If you need to replace these, uh, it's the ties on the ground. You could just get in here and, and rework it, do maintenance yeah. on it. Yeah. I'm telling people when you're getting on a roof, you know, when you're doing cable management on a roof, you have to realize you're not going to be able to get back under there and do it again. Not easy. I mean, you can Finish do it. it. And there's a wire that's hanging down and touching your shingles. You start over. Well, or you do like I've done is you get on your back upside down with your feet uphill and your head downhill with your arms shoved as far under as you can trying to fix that drooping wire it's a pain in the butt <laughs> i That's did that no i used a fishing pole and i got a zip tie yeah and i oh, put the zip tie up over the top of it and then i like teased it down the roof and then i put the fishing line and i was like trying to deploy a zip tie onto the rail from on the ground using a fishing pole don't be like schwa Right. That's what I was, that's what I tell people. I'm like, you don't want to be like this, yeah. man. Like anywhere that wind can move a cable. This is insecure. Yeah, so it's been blowing in the wind here for like seven years. Do you show Going, any chafing on the cable? Yeah. Yeah, we can see chafing on the cable. Look. Holy moly. Yeah, that is something to be concerned about. So it's not, it's not through the cable, but it's not no chafing on it. When the wind blows, this moves around a little bit and at some point it's going to fail. And the thing that's a real drag about it is it stops functioning and you're like, oh no. And you try to figure out where the problem is. You've got to have, in order for you to be able to diagnose it, that copper conductor inside the installation must be physically making contact with the rail at the time you're doing your testing to try to isolate it. It's difficult. So what you'd probably have to do if a, if that occurred here is you'd probably have to do a close visual inspection of so everywhere. You have to find them. Yeah, it's here's another of, one. It's touching right here. Yeah, so you can strap that down so it doesn't move. You can also put uh, there's some other special clips that fit either into the T slots on the side of the rail. But I'd say you can use metal zip ties. Those are kind of pricey. The Sun Runners are better because they're a round coated stainless steel cable that functions just like a zip tie. It's just now doesn't have the potential to do any damage. A, a standard stainless steel zip tie, they've got sharp edges. You know, the only other thing I, I would say is let's look at this uh, bend radius. That's a pretty tight bend radius. That is a really tight bend radius. So there is probably not too bad. No, I think this is probably the most you'd want, but if you bend that cable too much, you stress it, you can actually do damage to the insulation and to the conductor inside. So this has a, a heavier insulation than a regular size conductor that you would buy, for example, at Home Depot or Lowe's. So you've got kind of a double thick insulated wall there just to give a little bit more protection because these things come around up to 600 volts. So that said, there's a relationship between the diameter of the conductor and how tight you can bend it. You have to make sure to stay within the permissible bend radius when you're doing your cable management, very important.